Hey, this is the Black Belt Panda, and I just wanted to make this video to quickly talk about TNT and Obsidian. Um, so I've had a few people on the Redstone Bunker series um, argue that with enough TNT, you can in fact destroy Obsidian. And uh, after doing a little bit of digging around online, I see that a lot of people um, believe that you can uh, destroy Obsidian with enough TNT uh, as long as you can generate a uh, large enough uh, blast force. And their main argument behind this is with single player commands, you can generate an explosion of any force that you want. Um, and they will generate a force of, say, let's say 280, um, which is the equivalent of 280 TNT. So TNT has a blast force of four, so that's 280 times four. Um, but regardless, then, you know, they'll generate the explosion and it will, in fact, destroy the Obsidian. Um, so then they argue, well, with 280 TNT in one spot, um, all detonating at the same time, you would destroy the obsidian. So it's an interesting theory, um, but it's wrong. <laughs> so I just wanted to make this video to tell you um, why it's wrong. I want to explain to you a little bit about how TNT works. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail, um, but I do want you to understand how the blast works, how the force works, how block resistance works, and why you can't destroy obsidian no matter how much TNT you use. Um, so I'm sure you've noticed all the TNT in my inventory right now. I know I'm not going to blow apart my island. Um, and this video is actually mostly going to take place uh, as a slideshow, so uh, this will probably be the only actual in-game footage. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I first want to start off by explaining Blast Force. So basically, uh, Prime TNT, uh, when it explodes, the explosion occurs inside a block the size of 0.98 by 0.98 by 0.98 meters. Uh, so 0.98 cubed. Um, the explosion itself occurs at the center of this, uh, which is actually 0.49 meters away from the nearest block. Um, so that's important to know uh, because the distance, um, as I'm sure you know, uh, actually uh, is a factor when determining whether or not the explosion will destroy the block. So uh, I want to quickly go over how the explosion propagates. Uh, the explosions, they propagate in rays in a 360 degree spread. Um, now, the further away the explosion uh, travels, the more interesting it appears. Uh, up close, generally, when you explode, uh, well, when you generate an explosion in Minecraft, you'll see that it kind of looks like a sphere um, in terms of the uh, blast radius. Uh, but as it gets further away, since the explosion does occur in rays, it starts turning into lines shooting out in every direction. Um, so you won't actually destroy all the blocks within the radius. You'll just destroy all the blocks that intersect with these rays. So the blast force is actually a random value between 0.7 times the power of the explosion and 1.3 times the power of the explosion. And as I said before, TNT has a power of 4. Um, so the blast force of TNT will actually occur randomly between 2.8 and 5.2. Uh, TNT explosions, or explosions in Minecraft in general, are one of the most random events, um, so they can be a little bit tricky to work with. The uh, step length is what I want to go over next. Um, basically, uh, the step length is 0.3 meters, so every 0.3 meters, the um, blast is examined. And by that, I mean that every 0.3 meters, the blast will be absorbed based on the resistance of the block that it is traveling through um, and attenuated. Um, in other words, uh, the blast strength, the force, is lowered. Um, so the absorption, again, depends on the block. Uh, obsidian, for example, has a resistance of 6,000. Um, and the formula for that is the, the block resistance divided by 5 times, or plus, sorry, 0.3 times the step length, um, which is 0.3 as well. Uh, the, like I said, the blast resistance is 6,000, so that's 6,000 divided by 5, which is 1,200 plus 0.3. So we've got 1,200.3 um, times the step length, which, again, you know, is 0.3. 
So we end up with an absorption of 360.09. Um, and for these values, I am referring to blocks directly next to the explosion. Um, the blast is also attenuated by the step length, um, again, 0.3 times 0.75, which is 0.225. Um, so that is uh, how, the amount that it's lowered every step. So that's every 0.3 meters. Um, so in the case of the TNT being directly next to a block of obsidian, for example, um, it first has to travel 0.49 meters to reach the block of obsidian, plus another meter, meaning by the time it leaves the block of obsidian, it's already traveled 1.49 meters. So that's almost five steps. That's four steps right there that it's already gone through, um, where its uh, blast force has been lowered dramatically. Uh, we're only interested in the first step that it encounters the obsidian, however, uh, because every step after that, since the blast is lower, doesn't really matter. Uh, we don't have to worry about it. Um, so I want to go over the formula that's involved in calculating the resistance a block has to have in order to survive a TNT explosion. So the minimum block resistance would be 1.3 times the power of the explosion for TNT, that's 4, minus the attenuation steps times the step length times 0.75 divided by the step length minus 0.3 times 5. So it's a little bit complicated, um, but we're going to go over it a little bit at a time. Uh, so the first value we're going to plug in is the TNT blast force, the power, which is 4. And then we want to plug in the attenuation steps. Now the attenuation steps is just how many steps uh, before the blast reaches the obsidian. Um, and since the obsidian is 0.49 meters away from the center of the TNT, the center of the explosion, uh, we know that it takes two steps to reach it. So we're going to put two in for attenuation steps. And then the step length is 0.3. And then uh, we're going to plug that into both the step lengths. And then when we calculate this entire formula here uh, that we've, we've put together, we end up with a value of 77.67. So what this means is that the block that we are calculating for, in this case obsidian, um, would have to have a resistance of uh, a greater than basically 77.67. Anything less than that, and it will not be able to absorb the blast at the first checkpoint, the first step, uh, which would mean that the block would be destroyed. Uh, since obsidian has a resistance of 6,000, uh, obviously it uh, doesn't get destroyed. <laughs> so um, one TNT right next to obsidian, uh, clearly no way it's going to destroy it. Um, but I did want you to understand that that's how the resistance works. That's how it's calculated. That's how the blast force works um, because you need to understand that before you can understand why TNT won't destroy obsidian. Now, as I said before, the theory with um, the explosions is based off of the single player command uh, for generating an explosion. And the reason why that works is because obviously we're creating enough of an explosion to destroy the obsidian in one spot at one time, just a single explosion. So how do we calculate First, uh, what kind of an explosion we would need, what force of an explosion we would need to destroy the obsidian. Um, we're going to make a quick little change to the formula here. Um, we already know the resistance that we're shooting for, which is 6,000. Um, what we don't know is the blast force. So we're going to replace uh, the 4 that we had put in for TNT uh, with a variable A. And now when we solve for this variable, we end up with a result of 277.33846153815381. One heck of a number. Um, basically, what that's saying is you would need about 277 uh, TNT um, in order to destroy the obsidian. Uh, so, obviously, like I said before, the explosions can be pretty random. Uh, I'm going to be generous and say that anywhere between 260 and 290 uh, is the explosion, uh, 260, 290 TNT, mind you, uh, is the explosion force that we would need to generate in order to destroy obsidian. So it's a sound theory until you look a little bit closer at how the uh, block destruction works. 
and this is where the whole theory crumbles. Um, in order for a huge amount of TNT like that to destroy obsidian, every explosion would have to do damage to the block, and the block would have to remember how much damage it had just received. See, the TNT explosions are not cumulative, meaning they don't add up, they don't stack. Each of the explosions is calculated separately. So when you have, let's say, 280 TNT in one spot, all detonating, detonating at the same time, each of those explosions, because there's 280 separate explosions in the same spot, it's not one explosion, uh, each of those explosions is calculated separately for the blocks that they interact with. So in the case of obsidian, um, obviously it has a high enough resistance value to withstand one single TNT explosion. So since it doesn't save any sort of temporary health, it doesn't remember how much damage it had taken from the first explosion, the second explosion is calculated exactly the same. And even if they're happening at the same time, you can have 280 TNT detonating in one spot on top of a piece of obsidian, and it will do the same amount of damage to that piece of obsidian as a single TNT explosion. This is where the theory falls apart. There are no temporary health states for blocks inside Minecraft. They don't exist. Explosions do not stack. They don't turn into one giant explosion. It's 280 separate explosions in one spot. So I hope you understood that. I hope it made sense. Um, that's why you cannot, no matter how much TNT you put in one spot, destroy obsidian. Now there's a lot more to explosions than what I covered in this video. Um, if you want to learn more about block resistance values, uh, explosion force values um, for different types of explosions like creepers or fireballs or wither skulls um, or more of the uh, formulas or math involved, I will put a link to the wiki page on Minecraft explosions in the comments section below. A lot of what I covered in this video is on that page. Um, so feel free to take a look at that uh, if you wanted just a little bit more info. Um, I hope this cleared, it, cleared, cleared everything up for you guys. Uh, I hope you understand why uh, single player commands w works for destroying obsidian when you're using the explode command uh, simply because it's generating a single explosion of say 280 um, as opposed to using 280 TNT which generates 280 separate explosions in one spot. Uh, the goal is to make it clear, <laughs> so I hope that wasn't too confusing. Um, anyway, if you liked the video, click that like button. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave those in the comments section down below. And thank you for watching. This is the Black Belt Panda, and I will see you in the next video.